I get a ton of questions about what gear I use when I go spear fishing. In this video, I'm gonna go through my dive bag and show you exactly what I use all the time. The first thing is this bag. It's not really actually a dive bag per se. It's just a 120 liter waterproof North Face bag. It's got straps on it over the shoulders so you can carry it around. Open up, first thing I have is my mask. This is a Technisub micro mask or Aqualung as they say. Simply the best mask I've ever used. There's a lot of knockoffs of this that other people from China try and make. Definitely not as comfortable, definitely not as good a quality silicon. I would highly recommend this if it fits your face properly. So that's the mask I use all the time. I've been using that for oh, maybe like eight years or something like that. In Australia, very expensive. They're about $150, but over in Europe here, you can pick these up for about 35 pounds or 40 euros. I'm all for supporting local shops, but that's a bit of a stretch. All right, next thing, snorkel. This is a Rife stable snorkel. Not much to say about this. It's got a purge valve. I like it, quite long and tall. Sits above the waves really nicely. I tuck that into the back of my mask strap there. I don't actually use a clip or anything like that. So I slip it into the back like that and that's how it stays on, nice and streamlined. A lot of people don't like these purge valves, but I really like it. The snorkel works for me, hasn't let me down yet. Next on top here, basic float that I use for my diving in the UK and abroad, nothing fancy about it. No reason I'm using a Scorpina apart from the fact that it works and I got it at a competition as part of my sign-on fee. Has a little flag attachment here. It's taken a bit of a beating, so I really like this float. Fish stringer for sticking your fish on the back of your float. Clips on there, threads through the gills of the fish, sits on the back of your float. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to use. Next float here is a Dive R Dog Stopper float. Now this thing is pretty big. I would use this if I was going after halibut, which I have in the past. Dog tooth tuna, anything like that that's big. Or if I'm going on a particularly long swim or in an area with lots of boat traffic, this is great because it's very visible, especially once you put a little flag on the top of it. Pretty cool float from Dive R. Right, something you may not have seen yet because I'm not sure if it's on the market is this stuff called Slippy. It is a powdered lubricant. So you can see it here, it's just, whew, it's kind of like talcum powder. But when you mix this stuff with water, forms the most amazing wetsuit lube I have ever used. I don't like using conditioners because sometimes they can irritate your skin and you smell funky like sour apple or strawberries or something like that. This stuff's really cool. You can take this around with you on planes as well. So you don't need to buy conditioner when you're abroad, which is really costly when you only need a couple teaspoons of conditioner in your water anyway. This stuff, you can check it in because it's a powder. Fred Bester from South Africa makes this. Was a bit hesitant at first, but now that I've used it a few times, really good stuff. Next up is my dive watch. This is not a fancy newfangled GPS dive watch. This is a trusty Cressy Eddy Mark II that I've had for 10 years that my wife bought me for my 21st birthday, actually. It's been all around the world, hasn't missed a beat. I've replaced the battery myself essential bit of kit that I dive with, not only to tell me the time, obviously, but most importantly, my surface intervals. I always try and stay on the surface three to four times my bottom time. So if I'm doing a minute dive, I'll stay on the surface for three minutes at least. That's just a way to mitigate risk of blackout. That's not a way that's fail proof. So you always need to listen to your body, but that's generally what I try and stick to at a minimum. Next up here is a cray bag or shellfish bag for scallops, lobsters, crabs, or anything like that. This is a Rob Allen bug bag, this particular model. I got it from spearfishing.co.uk. Pretty cheap, about 17 quid I think I paid for this. Really good, really durable. There's a lot that you see that are made of pretty crappy nylon and that end up acting like a big sort of sea anchor in the water that drag behind. This, whether it's full or empty, drags pretty well. And like all Rob Allen kit, it's pretty bulletproof. On the subject of bulletproof, I am not, so I need to take my Avamine seasick pills every time I go diving out in the ocean. When it's really flat, I won't take them, but yeah, I'm horrible for seasickness. So the next item here is my weight belt. Now, the actual belt part of this is some sort of rubber stuff. It's not particularly stretchy, doesn't stick to your wetsuit very well, so I've recently upgraded to a silicon weight belt from Alchemy. I've had one of these about oh, six years ago and it was amazing, but because of people dropping their weight belts on top of my weight belt, eventually put holes in it and it split. So I've only recently just got one of these. These stretch way more, so they hug your hips a lot better in the water, way more comfortable, but I just haven't swapped that over yet. So on my weight belt, I have 
a knife. It's made by Omar, but every bum and his mum makes this knife and rebrands it as their own. Rife do it, I'm sure Spore Sub do it, everyone does it. I think it's a, originally an Italian knife manufacturer. Very simple sheath. Clips on there, stays in my weight belt. I can get it from any hand. That's as complicated as my knife gets. Rest of the belt, I have a belt reel on here made by Aussie Reels. I've had this for five years. Got 50 meters of Salvamar Dyneema line on it. Really cool, really solid. Used it a couple times. I only use it as a backup when I'm using a reel gun in case my first reel jams. This is the insurance policy that I have on the back end. Weights, pretty standard. It's lead, it's heavy, it does the job. Here is my drop weight. Now this is a little bit more fancy. You can take it off the belt at any stage and I use this in conjunction with my float line. I will anchor this on the bottom with my float line attached to it and then swim around my float with a real gun. Pretty simple, pretty cheap. I've had it for a very long time. As you can see, it's pretty beat up. So that's my weight belt setup. When I'm using a thicker suit, I tend to use a weight vest. And here I have a Polo Sub weight vest. It's made of neoprene. It's got a few slots in it here for your weights. I don't use solid weights because they hurt your back a little bit. So I have made up these out of Lycra with lead shot in them. So they conform to your spine a lot better, much more comfortable because you're gonna have a lot of weight on if you're using one of these in conjunction with a belt. So you wanna make it as comfortable as possible. Next up, float line. Not much to say about this, it's pretty simple. 35 meters of rope, it's about five or six mil rope. Shark clip on the end that I clip onto my drop weight, anchoring the float that way. That's about as complicated as my float line gets. I don't like using inflated float lines, the ones with tubes and then Dyneema in the middle of them. They will always eventually leak, so I tend to avoid them if I can and I don't really find that much benefit to them over this. Neoprene accessories. Booties, I'm using simple immersion booties most of the time here in the UK, five mil is definitely sufficient. And the important thing about booties is, for me, to get one that doesn't have a seam across your Achilles tendon on the back of your heel. There's so many manufacturers that'll make this out of two pieces like this, and it's just got a seam here and a seam down the front. I find them very uncomfortable and they tend to rub on the back of your heel a little bit. These immersion ones, they do the job, they're pretty cheap, 15 quid. Not much more to say about those. Gloves, you're always gonna go through gloves. I've never found any of these gloves that people talk about that say, oh, these last forever. You know, I've had these for five years of diving two times a week. I, I just can't see it happening when it's neoprene. Five mil Cressy gloves, pretty box standard sort of stuff. I replace them every year. These ones are pretty tattered, got a lot of holes in the end. I try and glue them up, get as much life as I can, but they're pretty well good down to about 12 degrees. Anything below that, your fingers tend to get a little bit chilly. Speaking of, if I'm going a bit colder, going abroad, Norway, Iceland, Finland, or anywhere like that, three finger mittens. You've seen me talk about these on my channel a lot. They just keep your fingers so much warmer. These are five mil. You can get seven mil versions, which I will probably be purchasing soon because I'm going to go to Norway in April. It's gonna be turbo snow and very cold. It's no secret on this channel that I love Polo Sub wetsuits. They're custom made, they fit me perfectly, they do the job, they do what I want them to. That's why I use them. These here are my seven mil pants that I use for most of the time in the UK. They are the Forza Tray material, so it means they have a sandwich between the layers of neoprene here. So it's nice and soft, open cell that sticks to your body, keeps you very warm, smooth on the outside, great for wicking away water when you're in a boat, stops wind chill. It doesn't say stop it, but it reduces the wind chill a little bit when you're in a boat. I've got a piss set on them. This is a game changer for anyone that's never tried one. Get one of these on your suit. It is amazing. You don't smell like a Yeti when you get out of the water. You don't get those like crinkly, dirty feet you have after a six day dive trip from pissing on your own feet. So, P-Tube, highly recommended. I use a smooth skin jacket in the UK, seven mil. I use straight smooth skin material, not the Forza Tray. So this is a little bit more fragile, but it's far more flexible. It's not that important to have the flexibility on your legs as far as I'm concerned, much better on the jacket. So this is what I use here. Seven mil keeps me pretty warm down to about 
12, 11 degrees. If I plan to dive anything lower than that, I'll probably take a nine and a half mil jacket. Next thing in my dive bag, uh, my beloved dive bars. I've dived with these things in Norway, Iceland, Finland, Denmark, Scotland, England. I even took these to Timor-Leste for a month for a documentary where I was filming blue whales. Every day, basically, and I was in the water with these things. They have not let me down. These are the shorter than usual dive bars. I used to have another pair that were 100 mil longer. I don't notice any difference in the amount of power that I get out of these, except that they are much easier to travel with. So they don't always look as scratched up as this. When they were brand new, they looked like this. Another one of the big reasons that I use dive bar fins is because I travel a lot and when I go to a remote area, I wanna be sure that these things aren't going to break because there's nothing worse than getting to a place, something's broken and you can't get it. If I'm in the north of Norway, I'm not gonna get any fins like this and it's gonna ruin the trip. They are expensive, yep, not gonna lie, pretty punchy, about $600 for a set of fins like this without foot pockets, but in my opinion, they're absolutely worth it because you don't need a spare set of fins. Attached to the fins are Mares Razor Foot Pockets. The great thing about these is you can change them and you don't have to glue them to the blade. So for traveling, if you need to minimize your baggage length even more, you can take the foot pockets off. The other great thing for me is I can swap out the foot pockets for a smaller size or a larger size. If I'm going into a warm environment where I need a 1.5 millimeter booty, I'll drop a size down on my foot pocket. If I'm going to somewhere extremely cold and I need to use a seven or an eight mil sock, I can get a size bigger, fits on the fin, because the blades are the expensive part, the foot pockets are pretty cheap actually, but Mares razors, I've used these for the last, I'd have to say six or seven years. Can't fault them, never broken any of them. The little tab on the back here that they come with, I tend to cut that off and just sand it back with a little bit of sandpaper because I find it gets caught on your rig line a little bit on your heel. So probably voids the warranty on them and may make them a little bit weaker, but I actually haven't had any problems. So brilliant foot pockets, can't recommend them highly enough. So that's all that actually fits in my dive bag, but when it comes to spear fishing, we need spear guns. The two spear guns I use the most in the UK is this 80 centimeter under pressure gun. It's a little simple, tube gun made of carbon fiber, carbon fiber handle, little 50 Omer reel on it with some 1.4 mil Salvamar Dyneema on it. Really cool gun, really accurate. I run a Pathos 6.75 millimeter shaft on it. Pretty accurate, single rubber. I've shot heaps of fish on this thing and yeah, does the job, pretty simple. I also have the same gun in a 110. If I want to go after big fish like a halibut, I've got this 7.5 millimeter Rob Allen spear on it here. I run two rubbers on it, but for the UK this year, I'm probably going to back this down to a 6.75 mil shaft with maybe two 14 mil rubbers or just a single 18 mil rubber. Maybe for the Mediterranean, I'll add a double wrap, but that's just not necessary here in the UK. Again, OMA 50 reel, 1.4 millimeter Salvamar Dyneema. Pretty simple, not much to it actually, but it does the job. I also get a ton of questions when I'm back in Australia about what gun I'm using there. The thing is, you can't buy them because I built them myself. These two guns here are made of foam, fiberglass, carbon fiber, stainless steel, and a lot of resin. The gun is a 120. I run two bands on this, 7.5 millimeter shaft, and the other gun that I use over in Australia a lot is an 80 centimeter roller single 16 mil small bore rubber and an eight mil shaft. Now, I just want to say that I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Nobody is paying me to say any of this. I use all this gear because I want to use it because it works for me. And most of the time it doesn't break. That's why I use it. So if you're wondering, not sponsored by anyone, no spearfishing brand has sponsored me ever. That's it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Give it a thumbs up if you got something out of it. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next one.